Chip Space Goer. All right, welcome to a brand new podcast that we don't know the name of. I'm Jeremy from Stupid Chainsaw Productions, and with me today is my good friend Dylan. Hey, how's it going? It's going good. Going good. Well, this podcast I've wanted to do for a long time, and so has Dylan. Mm-hmm. Or you just wanted to do something. I wanted to do something because he makes tons of videos. He does his Tuesday treadmill talks. I've been watching them. He's been doing his Amazon hauls. My channel is not really built up to where if I suddenly started doing vlogs, it would make sense. I would probably lose all 32 subscribers that I had at that moment if any of the channels are still active. So what's your channel? Uh, uh, Dylan Hill Dog. <laughs> I've, I made it I made it in like sixth grade because my friend Nate Blankenship's... Uh, his YouTube channel name, his like battlefield name, everything was Nate Dog. I'm like, that's cool. Dylan Dog was taken, D A W D. So I was like, Dylan Hill Dog, but I spelled it D O G because I didn't understand the the hip and happenings of the sixth grade at that time. And I kind of just made like, uh, I think my first video was just called Fraps Test, seeing if I could run Fraps on my terrible computer at the time, which I could. And so I just started making videos of me playing Amnesia while Skyping with Michael. But the thing is, I would ask Michael, like, hey, do you want to record a video? He'd be like, yeah, sure thing. And so I'd just be Skyping with him. And at some point during the Skype, I would just hit record while playing Amnesia. And Michael wasn't with me. You know, we were over Skype. And so it'd just be me playing Amnesia. So he'd go like, huh, well, something scary happened in the game. He didn't even know I was recording, so he didn't care. So he'd just be, like, occasionally talking about, like, what he was playing in Minecraft at that time. <laughs> As I would just be getting scared of, of Amnesia, which I'd played like four times prior. So just me like flying through the game, nothing interesting happening. Desperately trying to pretend like I didn't know what was going on. I would try to get Michael to watch the video. So like there was a live part during the episode. I don't remember which episode it was. This was in like 2011 probably. Where I asked Michael to like uh, to watch the screen sharing of the video while I was recording with Fraps on my terrible computer. The frame rate, oh no, no, it was my laptop. So it was actually, it was actually pretty decent. It was like an eight hundred dollar laptop, which would be amazing now. But in early high school, it was just like a, like a pretty great computer. Uh, regardless, um, it, it ran fine. It let me, you know, screen share while recording. Um, but when he was trying to watch the screen share because it was fraps, it'd be like I think while recording the screen sharing of the actual video during the video, I didn't edit the video, so I was you know sixteen, fraps years old. Uh, I would be watching it, and it'd say, perhaps it would say it's going at like six frames per second. I'm like, well, that kind of sucks, so I just turned off screen sharing. Michael still doesn't know I'm recording, and so i just be playing through Amnesia. It, at this point, I'm just kind of bored. Michael's not really talking. I try to talk to Michael for a while. I'll go on, go on like a long rant about something in the game I like or anything regardless, talking ideas for future videos. He has no idea I'm recording still, so he doesn't really care. He doesn't give any feedback. So he just... <laughs> He just remains dead silent as I'm playing Amnesia to myself, and my first, like, three videos were uncommentated. It was just me playing Amnesia, going through the game, sometimes being a little confused, and then suddenly he was introduced, and, like, I stopped making those videos at that point, and I started making Terraria videos, because he loved Terraria. We talked for a long time. This was patched, like, point four. Uh, and I would just be playing. We would just be recording our progress, recording houses, you know, just, like, the Babby's first, you know, YouTube video, playing a video game, and he still didn't know I was recording. Never once in, like, all of my 20, 30 videos that he was in, I never told him I planned to record that day or I was recording at that moment, at least at the start. And one of my videos, I was probably, we had been playing for about 43 minutes, and I uh, I made a little aside talking to the viewers, and he was like, what, what are you talking about? Like, why would you make that strange comment? I was like, oh, well... I've been recording this whole time. He's like, are you kidding me? I've been dropping, like, the hard R. I've been saying, like, all this horrible, horrible racist, sexist stuff just for the sake of jokes and you're going to put on your video? I'm like, you know what? No, that that actually, there'd be no reason. And then I didn't even test to see if the sound was decent when I started recording. So when I came back, it was me just being like, <laughs> and then Michael's mouth would just be completely consuming, like, all the audio. It'd be too loud to listen to. You'd have to turn the volume down. Then when yeah, I talked... It redlined. Yeah. Was, <laughs> and then, then when I talked, you couldn't hear a thing. And But I sounded totally fine. And my voice is great. And then Michael's voice sounded horrible. And it was extremely loud. So it's the total opposite of what you want. Mm-hmm. And then through some of my shorter videos, 
Michael sounded amazing. His volume was at like a perfect uh, level where you could hear the game audio and hear him talking and none of the two would interrupt each other. And then my video or my uh, my voice was so quiet. It was just like a total whisper. And I sounded like I was on the other end of Skype with no internet. And that's because I was recording with a uh, laptop webcam. <laughs> it's an expensive laptop, super cheap webcam. And so my YouTube videos have just kind of stopped from there. My last two videos were um, me recording my friend Travis playing League of Legends. There's um, Jeremy, have you seen the video? Where it's called uh, Rengar's Escape from it's Gold. It's been a long time, but I think so. Yeah. It's a uh, he's he's just I had to because of the uh, the obvious delay that League videos have or League replays have because I was wasn't watching it live. I was trying to get into the video as fast as I could and watch it. Like the moment I started, you see the Rengar like take a camp. You see him walk over. Um, and Travis is playing Tristana, and he's in the he's in the top side on um on purple team or what, whatever the upper right team is, uh, the dire side, in in Dota, and so uh, he comes over and he he ults so he can you know leap onto him, and Travis um Travis ults him from the uh, from the Krugs, and the Rengar uh falls out of the camera frame and he flies all the way to the to the dragon pit just falls right in the middle of the dragon pit. And Travis is like spamping in them, and it just stops there. Then I uploaded a video that I had uploaded about five years previous, and it was just me with um, playing Borderlands Two with Max. Uh, what's it called? Weapon. No, the, the the shooting. What's the max speed called? Oh, I Shoot can't speed. remember. Max you, max you, shooting speed. I'll I'll say that. And I was just a uh, fire rate. I was maximum uh, that the game allowed fire rate Krieg, and I was using the Bane. Just it, it was just showing that like when game sounds just turn off the bane still makes sound, but I didn't indicate that in any way. I didn't jump. I didn't shoot a wall with something that wasn't the bane. I just started shooting um shooting a dummy with the bane, and it was just absolute you know ear rape, horrible 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 noises. I zoom in and then it starts cutting the frames because at that point I didn't have that laptop because I had lost it in a stupid manner. I had left it at the um at the high school, and I walked away without it, forgetting I even bought the laptop in the first place. Oh my god, really? And that was in, like, September or August of 2016, and so I haven't uploaded any videos What are you doing at the high school, then? <laughs> no, 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 that's when I uploaded it. The, this was in um, 2011, I believe, is when I lost the laptop. We're just, oh, okay. I was playing with my brother, who's also named Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> we'll have plenty of stories about him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, it, at some point in future podcast, <laughs> we'll we'll gush about him. He's got absolute nonsense that he does. He's a he's, diamond in the rough. Is it? It's well, he's not a diamond, but it it's rough. It's it's like it's <laughs> like a darker, grittier coal. Like <laughs> like after the pressure builds up on the coal, it like breaks apart, and it it's like oh, that wasn't that wasn't coal at all. That was just like a turd. Uh, okay, <laughs> sure, it was just a just some sort of burnt sand. <laughs> That does not create glass in this imaginary scenario where we didn't plan this this uh, analogy. <laughs> and um, I was just playing with him on the blacktop. We were playing basketball or whatever. I didn't like basketball, so I was just kind of trying to make shots that were that would be cool for video. We weren't recording or anything, just trying to make like cool like throwing backward shots that everyone's made a video about on YouTube. And um, we were there for like probably four hours or something like that. It was like the moment school ended on a minimum day. Just playing with his friends, then his friends left, and we just continued playing. And then I forgot that I had this little uh, case that I had my laptop sit in, which was, again, $800. Not a nice thing to lose, and I just walked away without it. And after I got home, I was like, oh, fuck! And we sprinted two, uh, almost two and a half miles away, sprinted to the high school, and no surprise, it wasn't there anymore. I was like, maybe I put in the Burger King, and I ran in the Burger King. And they're like, no, there's no laptop. He didn't walk in with anything. I was like, all right, well, terrific waste of money. Obviously, I checked the lost and found. There's nothing of the sort. And someone who found that in a high school was not going to be a good Samaritan checking on the lost and found. So uh, that was a terrific story. And nowadays, I have a good computer, though. It can record things just fine. I don't use fraps anymore. I use, Bandy uh, I use Bandicam, but I don't know if the audio doesn't record well. Because of my, the classic Turtle Beach everyone's playthrough headset, or <laughs> or if it's just a Bandicam thing, I, I I don't know if it's just a Bandicam thing though. Because sometimes I record YouTube videos, I listen back to them, they sound fine, 
I send it on Facebook and it sounds horrible. But sometimes I record my voice and listen to it on Bandicam or not, ba yeah, uh, through Bandicam, and then it sounds just as bad. So I'm still gonna have to have that worked up probably by a real microphone or real recording software before I start any video game footage back. Well, we're gonna need a better microphone for this show. I can tell you that we're recording on my MacBook <laughs> Pro using the MacBook Pro mic. I've just been spacing out, watching, watching the. The volume level make sure I'm not getting too loud. Well, I should explain the setup here. Um, right now, I my gaming PC died. I burned something. <laughs> it is permanently damaged. It stays on for a maximum of 15 minutes without blue screening and crashing. <laughs> it's genuinely broken. It's probably from editing with just one hard drive. I don't know. What do you remember? There's no reason why you would, but do you remember like the the message you would get at the blue screen or did it like blue screen instant power off blue screen instant it? power off oh damn didn't yeah. even give you time just blue screen straight to power yeah failures that's terrible it is bad but um i bought a macbook pro last fall i really like it and i bought the magic keyboard the magic mouse too <laughs> uh the the connection so that way i can have it connect to the um Thunder Drive, I think is what it's called. Thunder Drive. Yeah, and it has a conversion thing to the uh, oh, it has like a lightning HDMI. Bolt. It's a lightning bolt <laughs> connection. It's and funny. Um, because when I plug it into the HDMI port, the way I have it set it up so it's attached to my TV, it would unplug on accident if I move anything. Yeah. So that it just caused all sorts of problems. And of course, for sound, uh, when I edit videos, I have my Bose Studio 5 soundbar. Um, which I really like. And that's pretty much it. I think I might get another hard drive, like a four terabyte thing for editing. Yeah. But I'm right now I'm rebuilding my gaming PC. If you're just editing a external, should do totally fine. Mm -hmm. As long as you have the SATA to USB connection or whatever. So most of them come with them, but if you get it for super cheap off of Newegg, which is one of the two places you should look at whenever you're buying computer parts, either being tigerdirect.com, mm -hmm. uh, the shipping speeds are pretty good. Normally the prices are a little higher than Newegg, but sometimes they do ridiculous shit. Like, it'll be a $40 item, and there's like a $25 rebate. And I built my computer for like $400 uh, pre-upgrade. I bought it for about $400, everything like built together. Then I upgraded it with some new parts from, um, from Newegg exclusively this time, because I wasn't ready to wait a couple months with how old my video card was at the time. It was... Um, a GTX 440. Oh, it's older than mine is in this wait, in my other computer. Yeah, it's it's ancient. It it can run fine. When I was playing Borderlands, you know, when that's the top of what I'm playing, that's totally fine. And I had uh, like two gigabytes of RAM, something like that. And my my CPU was okay. Like I was going to buy a, a nice eight core, like 3.2 gigahertz kind of you know the stuff the stuff you're gonna get the pretty much only option and. In CPUs these days, uh, but I ended up buying some kind of like six core, two point four gigahertz thing because it was like it was like a hundred thirty dollars or like a hundred ten dollars something something absolutely ridiculous. Um, I of course wouldn't buy it now because there's no reason just to buy something because it's on sale. And I understand that now that I am not in high school, and so I up I upgraded it with the GTX. Um, oh God. The 850 is like the, God, that's still it's a couple. the 1080 still, is the new one. Yeah, exactly. Like that's I, what I think I'm I saved up for right now. I think I got an 860. That if it, if an 860 exists, I got an 860. If not, then I sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. But I think it does. I just looked at um, Nvidia. I you know I'm not gonna get into Asus versus Nvidia kind of argument because the arguments the. Well, I'm, I'm getting into it now just by saying it, so I'll just make it as short as possible. Asus tends to run, you know, cleaner, smoother, less problems, um, better support. NVIDIA tends to be cheaper and overheats more. And I have a setup that, you know, it won't overheat just because I have a video card that's relatively new. And so I just bought the cheap NVIDIA. It was like $160 when it was listed at something that was absolutely not $160. And I don't know what, I'm not going to say what was wrong with it, but I don't know what must have 
happened to it to force it to be sold for that much. But you know, I I bought it and it was totally fine. And I thought, well, I'm I'm halfway there. I might as well upgrade my uh, CPU. And so I got the standard like 3.2 gigahertz, eight core, um, AMD. AMD makes motherboards, right? They don't make CPUs. I can't remember now. It's I'm blanking <laughs> on all of my computer knowledge right now. It's, it's that's because like you're playing to build a gaming computer, so there's no reason to start looking at it all now and like get it in your head if you're not even ready to buy it yet. Because yeah. there's still there's still a lot of setup that you need to worry about before that. Mm -hmm. No reason to go looking at stuff before you start checking it out unless you. Unless you find that like legendary deal that you know about, and you don't yeah. want to go around asking for people because it has like an hour left on the deal, you know stuff that happens whenever you're buying a gaming computer because those are always on sale in the most opportune times. But but yeah, com computer runs fine. Um, my mouse I used to have a, a Rat Seven, which was you know perfect. Um, my girlfriend at the time bought it for me because she knows of my fondness for rats, and she's like, this mouse is called a rat. It looks cool as absolute shit, and if you're familiar with the rat brand, um, I think <laughs> if I'm wrong, then it's even stupider. But if I'm right, it's hilarious. I think of uh, Mad Cats from you know, oh, no. makers makers of the of the little the Game Boy light that you plug in that puts a light <laughs> onto your screen when <laughs> because the Game Boy had no backlight. I believe I'm almost certain that they are the makers of that brand. I'm gonna pop they it made up on my really phone real bad quick. PS2 controllers. I remember that. I re yeah, they made a wireless controller. It was the first wireless controller I'd ever oh, had in my it life. Was bulky and garbage. And like when it, it just... drained batteries. Remember that? Yeah, the, the battery. You could play for like a good three. No joke, like three hours before you'd have to look for new AA brand new batteries. And when it, when it, um, when it vibrated, it was like. Because this thing, like, broke instantly and started smashing against the controller, making, like, this knocking sound. And I've had the same stories with everybody. Um, and it it was a bad experience because, like, sometimes it would lose connectivity. What I didn't like at first were the bumpers were not the, like, the clacky, you know, instant responsiveness mm -hmm. that you would get from the other ones. They were the kind of, like, rubber, like, hold them down. It doesn't feel like you're actually holding it. Mm -hmm. But when you'd be playing, like, a shooting game or something like that, and you're holding it down, and it's kind of shaken. It's it's an interesting, like, very light replication of shooting a gun. And obviously, it's not for real, realistic purposes. It's not like that's what they <laughs> that's what they're going for. Mad Cat's combat training us all. <laughs> I search Mad Cat's rat. Oh, I searched Mad Cat's rat. Eight is the first thing to come up. Um, I'll go. <laughs> rat seven shows up instantly. Uh, my girlfriend bought the time. It's this giant clunky. I'm putting up a photo of it right now for. For Jeremy, just if you just look up the Rat Seven, you will find it instantly. It's what the shit. It's super clunky. It has um, it, it ha looks like an MMO mouse. It's it kind of works like that. It has like as like a zero to twenty, I think millimeter scale for where you put your wrist, uh, and you can slide that up to like however far or like close you want it to the mouse. Um, under that, it has a little like a. A screw that you can unscrew, and when you unscrew that, you have access to a couple weights. Each weight is like a single gram, and you can put up to like eight grams or something on that. And I really like that because when I was drawing, um, whenever I did digital art, I would turn the weight up to like as high as I could, and that would you know it let me like not twitch my hand a tiny bit and fling it just like a little bit too far because you know the subtleties are what makes art nice. Um, but when I'd be like just browsing Facebook, playing games, whatever, I could turn the weight down. But that that nice function aside, the clunkiness of this monster uh, to the left of it, where you where you put your thumb, um, there's a thumb grip that you could have it like totally flush with the mouse, or you could have it extends up to like sixty degrees. So you basically have your hand entirely open, just like open it flat, like where you'd sit on your knee or something like that. That'd be how your hand would like rest. You were just sitting there normally, which is either extremely uncomfortable or very comfortable because a lot of people, you know, like to squeeze their mouse when they're playing the game. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, you'll hit one of the three buttons on the thumb wrist at the very end. There's um, God, what is it? Like it looks like something. Now that I think about it, like when you have carpal tunnel, yeah, 
It's it, a carpal tunnel. Mouse. It, it does look like one of those ergonomically friendly. But it's super. It is ergonomically friendly, but um, it would have a bow on it though if it was really. <laughs> yeah, it's it's close enough. It's it's the in between grandma mouse, gamer mouse, grandma mouse. You know, rat. <laughs> <laughs> and um, oh god, I forget how ugly it looks when you adjust the length. But when you adjust the length, it just looks like um. Okay, making sure we weren't crashing there. All right, it's just the display. Um, yeah, I prefer to keep it on so we can it, see. He's got the audio out. display on on the television as previous. And I have to have this open uh, because of the mic. Otherwise, I can keep it closed with the setup, yeah. which is what I usually do, and it saves <laughs> power. Yeah, of course, and it's less to look at and bother you, anyways. But when you when you extend the um, the little wrist grip. It just looks like a, like a little piece of metal just sticking out from the mouse. It looks horrible, horrible. And the whole right side of the mouse just kind of like closes in. And so there's just like a sharp point sticking sticking inside the mouse, which obviously you're not going to hit. But it just it looks hideous. There's three thumb buttons at the, at the tip of the mouse, which is you either press on accident or you can't press it when you want to. It depends on how your thumb sitting. If it's closed, you can you know just squeeze the mouse and it'll press the button. And then there's the two like forward and back buttons that you can set to whatever key you want with the Razer software, which I really appreciate. I have it set for uh, you know macros on my keyboard, and that saves a lot of time when I'm when I'm doing editing and I don't want to reach around. You can you you just have two buttons. That's all you need when you're doing art. For if you're me at least, it's just undo and then eraser and I have one button that you know clicks the brush and that's kind of all I need for basic art and you know that's that's totally fine it's just like a normal adjustable mouse <clears throat> but then they have this like um I don't know what to call it it's like the um it's like a smaller cleaner version of the of the spinet component of a bop it and that's in be in between the thumb and the in the um in the wrist of the of the mouse and you roll it to the left, and it does an action. Roll it to the right, and it does an action. And it's just the actual size of the mouse is totally ridiculous. It's it's basically like if you just have like an average sized you know hand, it's about that big. It's like this disgusting monster of a mouse. It's like probably like twenty percent bigger than most normal like day to day mice. And uh, she bought that for me, and I. I absolutely loved it. I hated it at first, but it was it was well built, well you know well structured. The the mouse cord was um, was some sort of cloth, so it was it was super durable. It wouldn't get tangled up in knots. You wouldn't worry about it like the wires not working anymore. If you had an angle for too long, then you try to move it like uh, like headphone um, like headphones, you know, cords like that. But then after having it for just like eight months or something like that maybe not even that long it just it just stopped working the uh, and i looked it up in the laser component of the mad cats um the rat was not designed well because it was made by mad cats and the laser just just loses connectivity and then just like loses function you mean the the whole point of having a mouse yeah exactly you and obviously you can't just be like oh the laser's not working i'll use the mouse anyway you can't move the mouse you can you can just click and, and do the cool actions with it, and it it just totally ruined the entire experience of it. And I could have sent it in and got it like fixed. And then someone I read a bunch of stories of like they ran in and got it fixed, and the like the first one, you know, or not the first one within the year it's free, and I think you could send it however times you wanted and it'd still be free. But after the year, you had to pay like you know money. You had to um, request a ticket from the website. Uh, it took about three days to even get a response from that. And then I talked to someone about it, explained my problem in great detail. They're like, oh, just send it in, pay shipping you know, prices, we'll send it back, and then we'll send it back to you. And I was like, alright, that, that sounds good. And then I started looking at how much it costs to ship, and it was like, for some reason, it'd be like $7 to ship it or something. Which, you know, it, that's not much money, but I didn't have a job at the time. I was full-time college, had absolutely no time for school, because I'd be, you know, doing work the entire t or not doing work I'd be doing college the entire time and then I'd be taking care of my girlfriend because she had a lot of health problems where like I was terrified even like at school of leaving her alone because like I might come I might come home 
and she would be like on the floor and she couldn't get up because she was in so much pain. And so I was like, I'm not going to get a job. I would be tuckered out. I would have literally like no time for sleep. And then like if I was at job when she was like if she got home, hurt at home, I'd be like I don't have a car. So I'd be just running home from my job as fast as I could to get her. And then who knows she might like who knows what would happen then. So like seven dollars was just an amount that wouldn't kill me obviously it just kind of annoyed me so i went eh, maybe i'll just get a new mouse and i read some stories and they're like people talking about how they did get it and then like a week later it would break and they send it in and then it'd be good for like a month and then it'd break and then they would not send it back for like two weeks or so. you know it's like a week or two depending on like international not international you know holidays and like what business days they were worked and they did not have very Good supportive hours at the time they, they might have better ones now so it might you know it might be a week and a half on average before they get it back and then they had to send it back like a month later or something like that and once that happens you know three or four times of just sending it back paying a bit every time you know going out of your way just to you know have a mouse and then you, by that point you'd be like all right i'll buy a backup mouse because you know i'm going to be using my computer in the meantime it just it becomes not worth it because soon that year will pass. It'll pass quicker than you think because it's not going to break in the first month. Obviously it's going to break like second half later into the year, like 10 months in maybe. And then you'll have like one or two support ticket responses that come late and you'll send it back before the year warranty is gone. And all of a sudden you're starting to have to pay to get your mouse working normally and just break in yet again. And so my current build Wow, that was like a 10 minute. Yeah, it's a, been going on forever. 10 minute aside. Uh, my current build has a, on Facebook, very untrustworthy, obviously. It was like a suggested ad for like, it's like free mouse. And I was like, okay. And I looked at the website and I was trying to see if it was a scam or not. And the website had such a strange array of stuff that it had that I was like, all right, if this is a scam, it's hilarious anyway. Let's give him my information. Um, but you had to pay for you had to pay for shipping and handling, and I was like, oh, okay, I expected that, so I'm basically just paying ten dollars for a mouse, and I was like, I'll get one for her as well. We weren't even dating at this time. This was like four years later. Nope, this was like two years later. And, um, <laughs> and the, mouse, the mouse came. the The mouse works fine. It's just nothing special. It's just a. It looks like a free mouse. It kind of dresses itself up as something cool. Like it doesn't look amateur or anything like that. It just it doesn't look anything special. It looks like these searched like techno filter or like techno texture, and then they just slapped that on like a normal mouse and then made it like heavier plastic. Uh, the keyboard I'm working on is uh is the Razer Tournament Edition keyboard. I have a Razer keyboard too. They work. They work great. I literally just bought it because my friend Steve had one, or a, not a Razer keyboard, a mechanical keyboard. And when you click it, it's extremely loud, and I, I laugh whenever he types. I'm like, this is so fun. I'd be talking to him on Skype, and I'd just be listening to him typing because it was, it was nice to listen to. It's, like, almost therapeutic in a sense. So so I bought one of those. It's I think it runs at, like, $60, uh, the tournament edition, not the Chroma. The Chroma you know, has all the colors and the color mapping and, and all that cool stuff you can set up for it. And I don't really care about that. The light will just distract me, you know, when I'm in utter darkness because uh, when I bought it I was working and coming home at midnight and I had college and so I'd be playing until like four in the morning getting a nice you know two to three hours of sleep for college three hours if I decided to go to sleep before four you know and um, when there's just like bright lights in your face you it's 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 I don't know it's it's weird it just takes you out of it it's uncomfortable so yeah it's uncomfortable so I just bought what was comfortable which was the uh, the Black Widow Tournament Edition off of um, Tiger Direct this time. It was like $20 refurbished with a $20 rebate, something like that. Rebates all the time with them. Sales, not so often. Sales and rebates, sure thing, as long as they get that rebate. And um, I've not had a single problem with it in my years of owning it. I bought it at some point in 2014. And so I've, I've owned it for like three years and I've used it probably like every single day. I've taken care of it. I haven't like, you know, eaten nacho cheese. Well, 
well, on my keyboard and dumping shit into the cracks. It's it's just been totally fine with me. Only thing that bugs me about it is there's no uh, no number pad. That's that's what makes it tournament edition. Oh god, it doesn't have a numeric keypad. No, it it throws me off sometimes too because like like your tiny little magic keyboard, whatever you called it, smart keyboard, magic keyboard. It's a magic keyboard. Magic keyboard with the eject button. <laughs> it has an eject button that every Mac needs. Uh, got, I don't know where your other keyboard is. Oh, it's buried under crap. I try to. Think I don't of, use that side of the desk anymore. I'm trying to think of what else they have there. They have like the enter key, the numeric keypad. Um, they got the home screen, the scroll lock, all that shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had some games set up where I had like the home screen would do things, which was it, it's it's stupid, but you know it's it's just one of those things yeah. that you have your right hand when, sitting near. When you get uh, or into Razer keyboards, they just have a lot of um, unnecessary crap on them. Like I have a bunch of keys on mine that I never use that I could just save things on as yeah. like shortcuts yeah the, the black widow's no no exception to this rule um where the i think that's what i have on an older version of it where the alt option key would be on this little magic keyboard um on that side and the command key on the right side after the space bar there is like um i think it i think it right clicks i'm not quite sure the description is or description. The illustration on it is a mouse cursor, and then there's like a drop down menu. And so, whenever I click it, it seems to right click, but sometimes it doesn't. So I don't, I don't care enough about the button to to need it. Plus, if it right clicks, I got my hand on the mouse. I, I'm never going to use that. And so, yeah, it's a worthless key, I think, for just about anybody. But other than that, you know, the keys perfectly fine with me i have it set up where if i'm playing like an emulator i have a key that like um like if we're playing super mario thousand year door there's a lot of points where you have to spin the control stick and you can't do that on, <laughs> yeah, a, on, a, on a wasd so i have a button set up so when i hold it it just inputs um spinning with the minimum delay that the nintendo gamecube i so like a frame every frame it'll just take it up then upright then right then you know downright it it does that and just spins it around as fast as humanly possible and it, it's it's nice if i didn't have it i would be like eight hours into the game without the ability to to go any further and i'd feel like an idiot and you have to set up like ps3 controller to work up on it uh and that's like the worst thing you can do a lot of the time because mm-hmm. man some of those emulators for it <laughs> are crap i had that i had an incident with one of those where it just stayed on my computer for years. The emulators? Yeah. yeah. And it was just like a virus <laughs> thing. Pretty much. But, um, yeah, well, let's talk about why we got, why I decided to make this a podcast after yeah. you spent half an hour yeah. talking about your computer. Half an hour about my keyboard. Um, I used to want, listen to this podcast called The Flap. And The Flap was these two guys from the Paper Cake Comics podcast talking about their lives as fathers and stuff. Like, they have an episode where uh, one of the hosts, Dale, got a vasectomy, and they talked about it in detail. <laughs> oh and at awesome. time, Dale crapped his pants. And it's just all these times where there's incidents of Dale having just a rough time and Slim, the other host, kind of making fun of it, <laughs> but, like, being supportive. And they don't make really episodes anymore. In fact, Paper Cake's ending, like, in a couple months. Shit. It's winding down to uh, episode 300. And, um, yeah, I decided that I wanted to step in and do my own sort of thing, with my own sort of flair to it, and have, like, these hour-long episodes where we just talk about whatever we want to talk about, you know? And, like, we, we get into all sorts of, we have sorts of weird conversations between the two of us, <laughs> and, like, weird stories, and it's just... I think that everyone would enjoy listening to this. Well, not everyone, but my fans who like to hear the weird crap that goes on in my life, like with the Tuesday treadmill talks and stuff. <laughs> this is like a more detailed version of that. Um, and hopefully it will go to iTunes if I figure out how to do that. Because <laughs> it's been difficult. Um, I have another podcast called Star Wars Legends, where another host also named Dylan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I do this podcast. We haven't done it in a while because you know he doesn't like to show up for podcasts. <laughs> and um, he, it's just 
difficult to do it. The way we used to do it was we used to do a live stream through Google Hangout. So but you... they got rid of that option. Right. And I was super pissed. So we've only ever done one since then. And I think the uh, show peaked a little bit at episode 19 where Dylan and I finally met in person. Oh, shit. And we were at Matt's house in Louisiana. And uh, we had our pre-Gen Con talk. Oh, my God. It Just was pretty great. Killed the whole mystery of the of the Skype and podcast. Yeah. Um, we've done one since then. I don't think it turned out that good. I need better equipment for something like that. <laughs> I mean, I have pretty good now, but I just need better. But yeah, um, what was it? I wanted to talk about some other things before we go. Uh, In the car, we're talking about, like, nature versus nurture. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were getting philosophical. Um, I'm writing a series of papers on, like, human suffering. Because <laughs> uh, I suffer through my English class. <laughs> And I figured, why don't I channel my suffering? Like, it's like the worst English class. I like the, the paper you're writing on, um, on digital arts about what does social media mean. Gee, I thought I, that was pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, check out Tuesday Treadmill Talks. We went on a really long rant about that movie, The Host, though. Like, I was in, I don't know what that was about. You go on these, on these rants about stuff, and you go into such detail that no one cares about. <laughs> Like, someone just really cares about the movie that much and wants to know your opinion. Yeah, I wonder who would watch that movie. I don't know. Fans? T. I guess. Oh, I'm almost at 300 subscribers. Oh, yeah, that's... Almost? I'm at 299, I think. Oh, 299? Oh, my God. I yeah, just, that's as of, like, yesterday. I, I just think. looked at it today. I thought it was slightly higher or lower than that. I may have dropped. I fluctuate quite a bit. I like the whole idea of talking about, like... Um... I'm going to start saying stupid words if I'm reading while... You can clearly see I'm reading while looking at my phone. Oh, boy. oh God. Yo, you're 299, yeah. Yeah. 299, I should No, I hit 300. Oh, just now? Just now. Just now, hell yeah. Well, there we are. <laughs> hey! There's that magic 300. I guess I'm doing a subscriber contest. All then. right. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'll wait a little bit. Oh, yeah, it says 300 now. I'm on 7. What? I'm not on 7. I'm still 7. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, um, we were talking about nature versus nurture. Um, we could start. Well, I don't know. We were talking about stuff that we can't talk about on oh, the podcast. Yes. It's just completely inappropriate. Just highly, highly sexual, personalized experiences that, that would go into kind of uncomfortable detail. And with Caitlin people... would kill me. Oh, that's true. Heard. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. And uh, anyone who knows me would be listening to these and being like, why does... Why is Dylan talking about this? I really don't. You're like, like someone's going to listen 40 minutes into. into <laughs> After you put into, everyone to sleep your with your computer build. About what, what keyboard I have and why I have that keyboard. <laughs> and oh my god. Do you know Tiger Direct? Wow. We're going to have to give them a time code to skip to if they want to skip past yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, just put an annotation to see where I stop talking about the build. That's that's going to be very important. It's going to be useful time. Skip uh, 30, 36 minutes in. Well, if no, you're, if we you're, talked a little more after if that. You're I think here it's at, at least 20 minutes. If you're here at 38 minutes in the video, skip to 36 minutes if you don't want to see minutes 2 to 36, all right? In yeah. case you jump to the 38th minute. I'm just telling you right now, you jump to a good point. Yeah, I, there's just like so many things I want to talk about that I don't really want on video necessarily. I think that we, I couldn't do enough justice for it, and I don't have enough time to do edit that many videos. <laughs> um, just do a recreation. <laughs> do a skit. Well, I want to do that, but like, I want to talk about like movies and anime and stuff. Yeah, we'll do it at the same time. Like, I just bought all that Ghost in the Shell stuff. Did I tell you about Did that you? this morning? You didn't say anything about that. Oh, I was, who was I talking to then? I was talking Probably to someone. Probably Austin or John. I don't know. I don't know why you'd be talking to John about it. <laughs> Or Austin, in, in that case. Logan, maybe? I was talking to Michael. Michael. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't think you're paying attention. <laughs> I think I was in class. Yeah, you might have been. Um, been. So, like, I bought... Uh, iTunes actually had a sale. I was shocked. <laughs> and uh, I bought Ghost in the Shell, uh, Ghost in the Shell 2, or Ghost in the Shell, a new, the new movie, one of those two, and then the Standalone Complex movie. And then I oh. saw that Standalone Complex, both seasons were on sale. Well, I bought those, too. Yeah, I'm scratching my junk yeah. in front of you. I was pointing. Yeah. 
oh yeah, earlier today, like, Dylan walks up to greet me, and we got a whole bunch of friends around, and some of them We've are- been talking for a couple of minutes, like, probably, by a couple of minutes, I mean, like, 30 seconds. He's- And, and like- He's sitting in the chair, spread eagle, I'm to the and, left and of him. slouching, you know, I'm just, I'm really tired, I did done some homework. He's, he's comfy, start of the day. Yeah, and, um. Uh, we have uh, some friends that are in a, what's called College Connections, which is seniors in high school can start community college early mm-hmm. and get double credits. Oh, you get double credits? Well, high school and... Oh, high school credits, yeah. High school okay. and uh, college. I thought they got double credits for the classes for a second. Oh, no. Just and double, like, it's a, cumulative I call credits. them the... I was referring to them as the children. The children. And Dylan just looks at me and he's like, a uh, nice bulge. Or something like that. I think I think I just look straight down at his. It, it's not. It's really uncomfortable looking at his crutch now because he's. We. I'm spread eagle again. Yeah, he's cr- spread eagle. He's he's in the gym shorts, while I was recording his Tuesday treadmill talks, and um, so there's there's a lot more reveal to this bulge, and <laughs> in his he was in like you you know normal like um, I was in like my Vans shorts my, yeah my preppy boy shorts whatever whatever material those are made out of and i looked in and the way it just kind of converges in on like the zipper and all that where where like your thighs meet and the zipper converges it you know it just makes it naturally makes a big nasty bulge and i i pointed <laughs> i pointed it and it said like um God, what did i say like i don't know like your bulge is looking pretty fucking nice and i like i was like reaching my hand in like making a cup shape like reaching out him. <laughs> I think I said like I want to. I just want to reach in and grab some of that or something like that. And I was just rolling with it at this so, point. I wasn't. Yeah. I was weirded out, but I was just like going with it, yeah. you know. And then like it sticks. Was it Sierra and Maddie just look at us like <laughs> yes. what the hell? And then I immediately thought, not in front of the kids. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, but man, we so much, just so much weird crap together just at the school alone. <laughs> We dropped real quick off of nature and nurture to to bulge. Oh yeah, what a... just just because of the mention of of sexual, we got to the. I, I guess we're just showing an example of. We, this is just a taste. You we're know? we're both backpedalers in the first place, so yeah. What I you might who backpedals as much as I do. What you might hear in minute like three that we're gonna talk about, we're like we're probably gonna start off talking about this and this it might be the last thing you hear, and we might start talking about it. But then that'll just grow further and further away from that subject because we're so excited to talk about that subject and like, but before we get there, this and this and this, and then we'll eventually end off with what we started with, like now. I got the title for the the show. <sighs> what is it? Backpedaling. The back backped- backpedaling. Ba- or backpedalers, something like that. Back. A podcast about life. Peddlers. We should make a, some some kind of pun with peddling. Oh, backpedaling, huh? That sounds good. <laughs> but, yeah, um... Rat peddlers? Rat peddlers. I'm a fan of the rat hole. Yeah, uh, that might be what we call the gym now. Yeah, I, I guess that's a good name for a gym. It's 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 fitting. <laughs> <laughs> you right. hear my family yelling upstairs. I don't know if they're picking up, it, it, because there's no sound... Wait. Yeah, we were dead silent, and there's nothing showing up in the levels, so it's probably just us going quiet and, and laughing. <laughs> That's a good thing. So that would be good in post-production that we are refusing to edit out. By we, I mean Jeremy, because I don't live here. I don't know anything, don't really know much about editing. editing uh, I, I, I only know about editing on like an iMac, iMovie, iMac. <laughs> nice. You mean this? Oh, is this iMovie? This is it. No, this is a, this is Adobe Audition. No, it's not... Garage Band is what you're thinking of for the audio. No, no, we just we just edited it in iMac. Uh, iMovie. Or iMovie, yes. Oh god, what a terrible program. It it's it's fine. It's, no, it's not. It, if you know anything about editing, well, depending on whether you've done, uh, I, I guess I it, guess you got a point. I don't for, know shit about editing. So. Good for Dad making the home movie. Yeah, like yeah. we we did our our podcast in it. Podcasts. We did our broadcasts in in high school. Oh yeah, that's our stories. right. Yeah, we did. We both were in broadcasts in high school, but not, two different years. Yeah, not together. Didn't you do yours on tape though? On tape? Yeah, we did ours on tape. Yeah, we didn't. What do you mean? What did you do? Oh, because we had two different teachers. Which that's we both a, had Carol, didn't we? No, uh, oh, Woodman yeah. got the class. Oh shit, that's yeah, true. Woodman's the man. Did you do it after I did then? 
Yeah, because I did mine senior year. Did you watch my podcast? Yes. Or broadcast? We, did you see the one where I was forced to do the voice? No, I don't remember. Dylan. I didn't. I didn't do good. I I was just like, uh, I just be reading like, here all of a sudden like this and this and this and this going on. It's this 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 kind of news going on. God, I wish you could have heard Bob. But uh, <laughs> going in the cats. Called the cats. It'd be perfect background noise, but it'd just be me and you kind of just talking. I'd be reading what is off of it, and it would be really interesting. This too would have been this and this, which Carol can't wait to the summer vacation. And it was the, I was, I hated, hated my voice because as soon as I like heard what I sounded like, I was like, that's not what I sound like at all to myself. Like my voice sounds like, like, like the old fashioned, like, like wholesome like 70 70s nice like 40s voice that you'd be hearing like over the radio and like and i'm like that sounds really great and then i listen to it and it sounds like i'm like some like like fucking plucking my nose kind of like a nerd like classic voice they're like great i didn't know i sounded like that that's a little too bad didn't i realize, <laughs> didn't I realize how monotone i was until i listened to my uh own voice and i it was it was in broadcast while like well, you know, so when you hear what you sound like for the first time in in junior year, because you don't record yourself or anything like that, no one records you, there's no reason I'd be something like that. I would hear myself giving instructions to a, a, a different Travis. Yes, we got a little bit of it. Okay. There, there's it's like Sammy's being his it's for sure heard on it. No, this is good. I, I want this. I like the setup. <laughs> and so... Um, I would just, anyway, God, I just hear myself giving instructions to Travis. I'd be like telling them what to do, like what kind of shots we needed to frame up. It'd be going well. Then I'd hear it. I'm like, Travis, you were going to have to do the the uh, reading off the script for every single one of these. He's like, all right, no problem. The, the class is, okay, I'm going to get in a rant if, if I start getting into this. But anyway, yeah, no, let's not. Yeah, no reason to. Yeah. It, it, broadcast was difficult in high school it was, for both of us. It was for, fun. It was fun, though, yeah. Uh, sometimes you just, if you were the competent one, you just had to run everything. Yeah, that's what I was going to start ranting about. A yeah. super short version of the rant. It, it was set up so that, you know, you write the script, you go out and you film it, you bring it back and edit it, and, uh, and you know, you finalize it, show it to Carol, and he'd say whether it was good or not. And you had a group of six to do this, so typically you'd have, like, Wow, you'd, that's a lot more than yeah, we did. Yeah, shitload. That's it's, too many. Yeah, it's way too many. It's it's not. It, it doesn't work right. The way he wanted it to work was like, all right, you got like two people writing this. You got like one or two people coming up with the ideas. Um, and once you come up, oh, that's stupid. He didn't think about that. You would come up with the idea together. Then like two people would go write the script. Um, as as like a person would go with a friend, and they would you know they bring out the cameras and they would start recording just like B roll footage of the general idea of what they got. And as soon as they finish the script, they bring it back, they upload that footage, and they start editing it, making it look nice, while the other, like, two people or so go out with the script. One person, like, um, will be reading off the script, or, like, memorize the script or whatever. Um, God, I don't really know how he memorized it so well, but he memorized the script, like, immediately. Maybe he just could read it from there. It, it was years ago. And um, one would record the other while the other, you know, read the script out. And then we'd go back, and then we'd cut all that together, finalize it. But uh, our group started. We were the little group. We were four people, and it was fine. That, it, yeah, it was. That's still too many people. It was myself. It was um, other Travis. It was. Oh, lovely. Oh, we are we are coming in. Shall we, should we pause, or is it someone we won't call? No, we leave it in. Okay. But it's, for, it's the first episode. Kirk. I don't know. Who Kirk, Kirk is, is calling, dude. C R N C. Oh my god. What um, a professional podcast. Anyways. <laughs> um, not even muting. It, it stopped. It's been answered. Anyways. Um, so we had those people. It was myself. It was Nate Rodriguez. Oh, that's always a good one. Yeah, I have so many Nate stories. She was hilarious. We'll get to tell some stories there. We had tons of fun podcasts. I can go on from that at a different time. Mm -hmm. We had Travis, who I'd mentioned before. That was three. And then there was another kid who was barely attending because he would get sick so often he'd be gone for literally weeks at a time and so within like a month of the class it nate rodriguez got like suspended or something for like a month or something i don't remember what he did oh, maybe God. he went to what? did he go to ridgeview yeah, he went to ridgeview 
he did Ridgeview is the continuation school, one of the two in our town. We have two? Yeah, Honey Run's the other. Honey Run? I forgot that existed. Well, Honey Run pretty much, Ridgeview sticks to high school. Honey Run mm. is for third K- to yeah. middle school. The fact that there's third graders and continuation school terrible. is awful. Tells a lot, though. Tells but, a great story. But, um, it was a lot different when Woodman took over. Yeah. Because Woodman took, I was, the year, I was, uh, Generation two of Woodman's. Cheryl was an English um, teacher, and that did broadcast for some reason. And Woodman did this was part of this team called Fusion, which was more of like team building and stuff. It was an interesting program that I wasn't a part of, so I was default in it senior year by being in the only Fusion class. It was a kind of like technology meets school, kind of yeah, yeah like a team building kind of thing, mm-hmm. showing you how to work in different environments. I also wasn't part of it. Yeah, um, but before that, I did. Um, with uh, Martyr, who... Um, oh, I had not heard that name. <laughs> she did the yearbook. I was in her Photoshop class for a semester, because it's only a semester long. Is that her name? Martyr? I Martin. Martin, yeah. Martyr someone else. That's someone... I, that was one of my friends married a Martyr. I took her class. Yeah, Martin. I took her computers class, specifically. Um, then she, did, she had a video and web design class that I took, and I liked that, mm-hmm. even though we were using terrible programs. Um, hold up. <laughs> All right. I got interrupted in mid-podcast, but um, at least the cats are all in. Yeah, cats are in. Good. They're such a pain to get in. We'll have stories about that, too. You were talking before. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um. Then I was actually in, uh, what, what was the class? Uh, ROP Building Construction, mm-hmm. which was two periods long. And I was in there with people who, because I had worked construction that summer, I built, I yes. remodeled a bathroom, and, um, what else? Uh, oh, a deck. I rebuilt the deck, for, and this was for my parents. I was working with my grandfather. And, um, oh, okay. I came back and I realized I hated construction. <laughs> and I was miserable in this class. I had this class for a couple weeks, and my English teacher, Partain, really great. Um, woman, Re- one of the nicest people I've ever met. Uh, I never had classes hard as shit. I, but like, I never had any of the English cre- teachers that people told stories about. I never had Carol. Never had Partain. I had the yeah. one I don't remember the name of. Yes. Um. What is her name? The older teacher. Yeah, I. She kn- looked super. Madison. Madison. Yeah, Mad Dog Sh- Madison. I Mad Dog. Her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you could only call her that if you'd gone through her class. She looks super angry, but she's a sweetheart. As she had the weirdest down under. dog stories, and I don't remember any of them. She has we- She has lots of weird stories of like her like sleep talking or sleepwalking. She had a story of like <laughs> she has an alarm in her house set if she opens the door because she once like woke up in the middle of the road. Because she sleep walked walked in the middle of the road, she's she's she was a she was a blast. Yeah, but back to my story. So for me, it's like you should go uh, into Woodman's broadcast class. I'm like I don't know, I don't really want to switch out. And she's like, well, try it out. Get a, uh, I'll get you a pass so you can go or something like that. And I went, and it was like at, right after lunch, and it was awesome. It was all it was completely Dylan's was analog. You worked on tape, specifically, correct? Yeah. This was digital. We were using Macs. Um, We were just... It was sort of of state-of-the-art for the time. (laughs) As state-of-the-art as a public school can get. uh, In a poor community. To me, it was state-of-the-art. We had had them, but they converted to, like, a digital format. And and then we worked on iMovie. To do. I would... That's way too much work. It, the camera was, like, designed to do it. So we'd, like, take out the tapes and, like, we'd write a name on it so that someone didn't film over it, which they did anyway. We've had to redo so many because of that. But, like, when we did it, it was teams of two. Yeah. One per... Uh, teams of two to three. Um, and... Which, we, it, it felt perfect just doing mm-hmm. us two. And I'll be honest, I learned a lot in that class. I know a lot of people complained they didn't learn anything. Mm-hmm. But a lot of it was self-taught, like uh, because I missed all the instruction, <laughs> and um, I actually wasn't involved in. I was barely involved in the first broadcast because they came out monthly. 
And then we did the... Was ours monthly? I think ours was weekly. Every, yes, every, yours was weekly, every, but it was short. Every Friday. It was like a total of like eight or six minutes long, something like that. Yeah, and no one watched it. Yeah, not many classes even aired it. Yeah, and, and it was always a struggle to get the broadcast on. Yeah, exactly. Because broadcast would never work with leadership. I don't know why. <laughs> Nothing worked with leadership. Leadership's Ooh, yeah, Hell yeah, we can get some good stories from that later on. Yeah, we could talk about pe- the people. We should get Michael on there. The people versus leadership. Absolutely. Which I did a video on on my old channel. Oh yeah, you did a video years yeah. ago. Years and years Revisiting ago. Revisiting people versus leadership. Leadership versus the people, I think is what I called it. I, I just made fun of everyone. Yeah. And um, anyway, we would go out in teams of two to three and we'd film things yeah. and then... We would edit our own pieces. But we had a storyboard that I remember because I draw stick figures <laughs> and storyboard. St- that's awesome. It, it was great. But, but I learned because I watched, this is when I first started getting to Blu-rays and like Blu-ray collecting. And one of the first Blu-rays I bought was Evil Dead 2. <laughs> and I saw, because I'm used to like the Star Wars storyboarding where they have, it, George Lewis would have a team of five artists yeah. all storyboarding and they, they looked gorgeous. And then you look at Evil Dead. And then he draws in Sharpie <laughs> and stick figures. It's yeah, just Sam Raimi smoking a cigarette. <laughs> have you seen Spongebob um, storyboarding? Well, I not never watched Spongebob. Oh. Know that. They just like they just like draw the characters in like different scenarios and they, like put them on like on sticky notes and see like what's the best way to arrange it. And that's you know, great too. But uh, well we should get into our back grounds like what's your major um i'm majoring in electrical engineering um because i don't know where my future will lie i'm gonna transfer with an ast versus you know versus just complete what the bare minimum of what i need and then transfer over because i don't know what again what might happen i don't know if i'll get caught up in something and not be able to like attend college i don't know if like buttes will suddenly become expensive won't have the money don't know if like fafsa won't accept me FAFSA hasn't been working properly anyway. I need to talk to the financial office. Uh, fi- FAFSA is just our uh, financial aid for our, for the, our county, our schooling. And so, though our college is extremely cheap, like, you might have to pay, like, 150 bucks for... Look at you. For, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't qualify for any of that. Although, they told me to try to reapply. Yeah, for the past today. For the past two years, I've been paying out of pocket for it, though. But, you know, for, like, a semester, you might only have to pay, like, 150 bucks, minus books, of course. But, you know, you can try to find them for cheap. Chances are you'll be paying 100, 200 bucks anyway. But It's still better. It beats um, going to where we live in. Absolutely. We go to Butte College, just the name drop, which is right by Chico State. Mm-hmm. Well, not really, right by Chico not State. Right by, it's really close, It's a city away. In, a grand, in the grand scheme well, of the things. The main campus is the city away. But yeah, it's there's all, two campuses. Two, there's several. A minimal. But, there's like six campuses. Yeah, there's all sorts of different centers in different towns. Um, main campus is in Oroville. Then there's, well, techni- it's in Butte Valley technically, but it gets registered under Oroville. Yeah, quote unquote Oroville. It's like in the middle of the three cities that are there. Yeah. and uh, Cities. Three areas. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's in the center of the county. Yeah, it's center what of the I county. think it is. It's like the dead center. And um well We're probably so wrong on that. But it's close it's though. It's close enough. Because like be- to drive from Orville to Butte is pretty much the same time as it is to drive from where we are to Butte. Yeah. I think ours is slightly from, shorter. From Chico to Butte's a little longer, Paradise to Butte's pretty good. Orville to Butte is about the exact same time. Of course if time. you take my way, it's short because no one drives it. Yeah. I go around. Is that Pearson? No, I take Pence. Pence. Damn it, Pence. Pearson doesn't get you anywhere near. <laughs> I'll take it either Pence <laughs> or Cork that you go down. Yeah, there you go. It gives you the options. But anyway, um, my major is uh, digital video production. What a surprise. <laughs> yeah, stunner. Well, tell me about that, Jeremy. Well, we'll save that for another podcast. <laughs> Probably next episode. Because yeah. we're getting close to an hour. I want to keep these at an hour. So exact um, a minute away from hour, close so, to an hour. Anyway, we'll see you next time.